This morning we have been talking about whether contact rugby should be banned in schools and this follows medical research that has shown tackling and scrummaging leads to an increased risk of dementia. So today we're asking is a rugby ban for children the right thing to do? To join this, I'm, um, to discuss this rather, I'm joined by former international rugby union player Jeff Probin and professor of sport at the University of Winchester, Eric Anderson. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Uh, now, uh, Jackie is here as well um, because Jackie, this has created quite a lot of debate already on Twitter this morning. Um, I have to admit, Jeff, most people are saying how ridiculous to ban any kind of contact sport in school. It's all part and parcel of growing up and learning how to play the game. Well, to a certain extent, that's that's true. But, you know, it's it's an element of risk. And, and in, in every walk of life, in every everything you do, there's an element of risk. When you got out of bed this morning, you know, you had a, a greater risk of being hit by a car than being injured playing rugby. So, um, you know, in that sense... No, no, you don't. You do. No, you absolutely do. Per 1,000 hours of exposure, you do not have a greater risk walking down the street than you do playing rugby. So let, let's, keep, let's keep it... Let's keep it accurate. Okay. Let, let me tell you why we have this call for a ban. And I want to be explicit about this. Mm -hmm. This call is to ban the tackle, not to ban rugby. And it's to ban the tackle in schools PE, not community levels of rugby. So there is a place for children who want to play tackle rugby, who want to be trained in the specifics of tackle rugby. And it's under the domain of the Rugby Football Union in community rugby. We have just done freedom of information requests on hundreds of schools in the United Kingdom, and we show that 77% compel boys to play rugby even against their will. Yet, despite the fact that three-fourths of British schools, secondary schools, are compelling children to play rugby against their will, no teacher is required to have any rugby training whatsoever, and the Rugby Football Union nor the Department of Education will require that they have a Division I, mm. Division II, nor that they even have concussion awareness. So what you have is children who are compelled to play what PE teachers tell us is the most dangerous sport they offer, and teachers not only not being compelled to have no training whatsoever, but our research shows that less than one-third have any rugby formal training at all. Yeah, and that could have even been from 20 We years have had ago. a few tweets in about this today, Jeff, saying, you know, that um, parents whose children go to school and at primary school age, for example, in PE, you could be taught anything from climbing a rope to long-distance running okay. to high jump to rugby. And that one teacher doesn't have the, the right skills or expertise to teach all of those sports. Well, I'll give... Arguably, um, when, when teachers go to teach training and they're going to be a PE teacher, they're given a broad base. No, they're not. They so do no rugby-specific training base. whatsoever. You can't just be, nope, turn up as a not. teacher and say, I'm going to I'm teach a professor training. of a university. They do not. They yeah. are not. Well, let, let Jeff just they give, let, let they, that's give up the to sportsman rugby point football. of view, because Jeff has played rugby university. since an early age. Do your, do, your, do your sports teachers have sports training? They are not required to do, have I'm, any I'm rugby I'm not asking if they're required to. I'm asking you... If they have sports training. It's physical education, yes. it's health, right. it's pedagogy. Right, it so, so they do, what they do, they is do they have say, a level of If you of, want a qualification coaching. in rugby, seek it from the Rugby Football Union. But less than one-third of PE teachers do have that qualification, and that could be from 20 years ago, and the game is changing dynamically by the day. Of so our okay. argument but we have to... We, let we let the have, experts Jeff, do it. Let's get, let we do have, to, talk. do have to realise that, obviously, within the Rugby Union, well, world rugby rules, not, not necessarily English rugby, but world rugby rules, there are limits and specifications that are directly related to the training of children playing youth rugby at different age levels and those those uh, regulations are there to protect the children in community should, should in community in community but the community should, we're not talking game. community rugby. we're weight. talking schools but, no, should, should children maybe be divided by weight in rugby well I, I don't so believe the so big ones are playing with the big ones and the smaller ones are playing I, with I don't ones. believe so because that's preposterous. You, you have that you have that in places like New Zealand which New well, that's actually, preposterous Jeff you you believe that children one can be double the size of another, should be compelled to tackle each other no, against I, I, their I will. I don't believe they should be compelled to tackle. But they but are. So, what, so, what so, you so you advocate that children you, should not have to, to be compelled. Eric, 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 just for a moment. If you have a child who is 12 years of age, right, and he's a relatively small child, and you have a child who is 7 years of age, and he's a big child, would you play those two children against In PE, other? they're all 12. We don't no, play... No, no, you, no. See, you keep Would going you back to the community those again. Two against In, each other. Of course People not. You're doing it by weight. Absolutely not. You're doing it, you're doing it 
by weight. You can't be specific and say, oh, because this child but we're, is PE, so no seven-year-old plays with 12-year-olds. We're talking about schools PE here. You keep yeah. going back to the community game. In schools PE, do you believe, Jeff, that girls should be compelled to play tackle rugby against their will in schools PE? No. Do you believe that boys should be no. compelled? If you do not compel boys to play tackle rugby in school settings, why is that? Uh, I don't believe that anybody should be compelled to take part in any sport that they don't want to. So will you advocate that we change the rules for these 77% of British schools that compel boys to play rugby against their will? Well, will you 77% stand with me? of British schools don't actually 77% of 287 schools we surveyed through a freedom of information but request you, compel surveyed boys played, against their will. You surveyed their schools that played rugby. We surveyed, the majority of we schools, surveyed schools in England randomly. do not play rugby. We but surveyed schools, schools do sports randomly. in rotation. So they will do a term yes. of rugby, they will do a term of Eight football, weeks. and they'll do a term of athletics, for example, yeah, well, and that's just part of the school curriculum. Yeah, I mean, you could start no, saying... No, no. You could it start is saying... not mandated by the government. The government recommends rugby, but does not mandate rugby. Hang on a second, Eric. I do have to... It is a debate, so let's just get both you sides of the argument here in like terms it. of... Jeff, a lot of people are saying, if you're going to start doing that, you should be banning cricket and hockey. Uh, we've got a lot of parents getting in touch this morning, getting their children sustained injuries for that. We've got a dad who said his daughter split her lip in gymnastics. Yes. Again, should you be banning that? Isn't it well, part and parcel of, of growing up? Well, there's also the injuries? argument, you know, your, your build into this said that, it, that it's proved to cause dementia. Heading a football has been proved to cause dementia. There's been no call for that to be banned. So are you banning Yes, football? lots of call for that. Yes. And, and how, and Across the West, contact sports are under assault. Yes. Because the, the research that is coming out about the, the damage that's caused, both in the short and long term... Is, from multiple forms of head injuries, from traumatic brain injuries, dementia, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. But then you wouldn't, you wouldn't Alzheimer's. allow children to go and run outside. You wouldn't allow children to go on swings. They fall off but swings. But you can take you're, that's a slippery slope argument. You might as well just say. But children it's a slippery shouldn't. slope argument. You're we're, starting. We're not, Where do you draw the line? We're drawing the line. We're saying just in schools, make it touch. You We're have not to calling be, for a ban on rugby be, or, or okay, cricket. Well, what about, Eric, what about if you Eric, want to touch. play rugby and you are 16 and you're fully grown? Fantastic. Um, and you're saying play touch rugby. When you nope. come no, to no, play no, rugby, no, no, no. Go to the community again. How, Jeff, how play it in the community. How dangerous Don't is play it in PE. In the community. Non, from touch rugby to real full on rugby and never having played Never having played it, it would be serious. That's a false argument. There is a location for them to play, but it's a false argument. There's a location for them to play tackle and it's community rugby. Eric, you have to understand. Eric, want to Eric, play. Eric before I come over there and tackle you, just let me <laughs> speak, if that's all right. What, what has to be understood is that um, if you look at community across the board, right, at schools, uh, one of the aspects about schools in terms of what they teach in PE is that it gives children the opportunity to try different things. So if you don't provide that opportunity, there are lots of people who won't get into any form of sport. Right. And so you reduce, and if you teach someone, if you show someone a sport that is not in its full capacity, then the likelihood is if, if you only teach people to play tag or touch, you put them on to, when they finish, they think, great, I love this sport, let's go and play it. Join a rugby club, and suddenly they come up against tackling, they come up against scrums. And concussion they come can up happen at any age, head injuries can happen at any age. Why is it different to yeah. school age to being an older child or a young adult? Well, yes, concussion can happen at any age. It so, appears that 10 to 12 is a rapid growth development for the brain, and so concussion at that age is, is particularly alarming, which is why the Rugby Football Union has made the age of tackling 10 or 11 or 12. But the point is that there is a very high rate of traumatic brain injuries occurred in the sport of rugby in pursuit of health as part of physical education. It is the most dangerous sport by multiple studies, and therefore all we are requiring, all we are asking, is to simply change it to touch. But there is a middle ground here. If we can agree that no child should be compelled to play tackle rugby against their will, then we will have given parents and children who don't want to partake in the game okay. an avenue out, and we would probably agree on that. Okay, probably, well, I'm, I'm going to have to blow the final whistle on this. I'm sorry. Before I start tackling or scrummaging, let's, let's call, a, call time on it.